Yeah. Uh, session, this is session number 88, and I would like to invite Dr. Kalra to take over this session. Dr. Kalra. Thank you, sir. Good morning to all, and I welcome you all to this 88th SCFI weekly session, the Roundtable Expert Group of Heartcare Foundation of India. Today we'll be discussing on the technologies in relation to the oxygen concentrator, oxygen saver, and ambu vac. A team from IIT Kharagpur, led by Professor Aditya Bandopadhyay and Professor Manoj Kumar Mandal and Sora Mitra and Mr. Subendu Mandal. So they will be <coughs> presenting their work, which they are doing after the onset of this pandemic of uh, COVID. Uh, they avail the opportunity of the challenges created by the COVID and started working on <coughs> the oxygen concentrators. The, in India, during the second wave at the time of peak, we have seen this was a major problem or the challenges at the healthcare <clears throat> facilities. We felt there were no oxygen stocks, a lot of problems. Before I hand over, to Dr. Ashok Gupta, who I will request to chair the today's session, a little bit update about the COVID. Globally, as per WHO weekly report, during the week ending 7th December, compared to the prior week, the global number of cases of COVID has increased in 2% and deaths 10%. This week, maximum these cases were reported. There was a hike seen in 70 to the extent of 79% from African region and 21% from America's region of WHO. Rest of the regions, they have shown decline in the cases compared to the prior week. And India, Definitely for last now 555 days, the second wave is definitely has declined. The lowest cases we are seeing the last two to three days. As on <clears throat> yesterday's information available on the Ministry of Health website, total cases reported 8,503 with 393 deaths today. All states, definitely there's a decline in cases and vaccinations, doses this <clears throat> received as on date are 131 crores, 99 lakhs, 92,482. Almost 80% of the eligible population have received the first dose and around 45% the, both the doses. Omicron cases in India as on date, total cases are 32. And uh, these cases are reported from Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Karnataka, Gujarat, and one case from Delhi also. There's apprehension about Omicron, whether when cases uh, are increasing all over the world. If India cases increase, as we know, it is much more in fact, it is highly infectious compared to Delta. But luckily, so far all over the world, including the India cases, all are asymptomatic are very mild. And they are becoming negative also of initial treatment. Hopefully, 
let's see time will tell us whatever information is available regarding the omicron more time is required after the trials are over then we will know how this infectious strain is going to <clears throat> work for time being it is recommended that all those who have not received vaccine must get vaccines at the earliest especially the persons almost 13.3 crores people in india for adults they have not received even single dose now this is a high time to receive vaccines the existing available vaccines are definitely effective against all these variants and must we all make all efforts that everyone is immunized and he observes the covid appropriate behavior this is the only two ways we can avoid the third wave which everybody is anticipating if people cooperate and get vaccinations and they follow the covid appropriate behavior we have learned the last one and a half year definitely will like <clears throat> will be able to meet this challenge of new variants which are coming uh about the two days only two people from iit khagpur are present professor uh, manoj kumar mandal who is a <clears throat> phd from iit kharagpur and offers the course entrepreneurship essentials under the swam swam program he received btech honors in chemical engineering and mtech in biotechnology mba in financial management and phd in the area of financial economics he has worked in manufacturing banking and r&d management and developed several technologies especially for the rural artisans he has been awarded a gold medal in 2008 by a consortium of lockheed martin stanford university and another uh, gold medal from from ministry of chemicals and fertilizer in 2014 for his innovation is a member of a team developing several technologies to meet the covid-19 challenges and other team member present is mr subendra mondal a graduate from iit delhi he co-founded the company desinfog in 2019 and had senior faculty from nid ahmedabad as a co-creator he is currently more focused on medical devices as well as communication devices which has multiple usages recently during the anek as a this ionic azadi ki amrit mahotsav program of india the company has received an accolade from government of india for its innovative work subendu received innovator of the future accolade last year from pan iit us community the other two members due to some circumstances uh, unavoidable circumstances could not make them available today for this meeting now i will hand over to dr ashok gupta to start the further proceeding of the today's meet thank you professor kalra thank you professor mandal for uh, honoring us and welcome uh, in giving us the chance to learn from you before uh, can i have my slides to introduce the topic can i share the screen is it possible uh sorak yeah, i think you are allowed to see yes yes you can share yes can i is the my slides are visible yeah yes sir thank you very much and uh, i take this opportunity of uh, taking advantage of the uh, infrastructure support which professor mandal has uh, uh, given us and this actually started when we were in the peak of the second wave 
and all of us were facing the acute shortage of oxygen all over the country and we, uh, we realized that there's, there's a need for development of indigenous technology and capabilities in related to oxygen concentrator, oxygen saver and healthcare deliveries, etc. And what le lessons we have learned during the second uh, peak, we have an eminent panelist uh, which have already been introduced by Dr. Talga, so I'll skip this. This was not an uncommon scene during that time. Uh, whether it is city of Bombay, whether it is a small village, or whether it is a, any part of the state. The slides are not moving. Sorry, they are not moving. Sorry, is there any problem with that? I'll make it F5. I will reshare again. You just need to come in the presentation mode and then it will move. It was uh, not in the presentation mode. I will share again, once again. So, anyway, I'll just so, say things. I will, uh, I will like to... Uh, no, don't take... Call. I will just say that during this time... Antique of Gethanik. Uh, with the with the develop with the wheels uh, global wheels care foundation wheels foundation which is a pan iit alumni association uh, health uh -huh. uh, wing uh, i am one of the member of the healthcare oh. council i approached them and they directed me to professor mandal yeah. and when i spoke to professor mandal about the oxygen concentrator he said uh, sir i have not seen what is the inside of the oxygen concentrator so at that time critical time i could manage to get one uh, uh, oxygen concentrator from Bombay and shipped it from Bombay to Kalakpur. And that opened the complete floodgate of the indigenous technology. We were fighting with the oxygen supply, we were fighting with the Ambu bag, we were fighting with the ox um, ICU running out of the oxygen uh, cylinders, we were running out the OT running out of the oxygen cylinder. And then over a period of time, where we discussed we, are, we should not be contained with two liter or five liter oxygen concentrator. We should look at 40 liter oxygen concentrator, which can be used as a backup for ICU and OTs. And we should also develop an indigenous technology to develop oxygen generating plant. And Professor Mandal has done tremendous job indigenously. And I must compliment his wife. While looking at his effort, his wife came forward and donated 10 lakh rupees out of her personal fund. I mean, that sort of uh, gesture cannot be matched by anyone. And I, I, my salute is to Mr. Mandal. Thank you, all yours, Professor Mandal. Enlighten us, all your efforts. Professor Mandal has shared his background. He came from a, such a modest background. I would not like to read that, but hats off to his effort and hats off to reaching to the highest level of education. He has got number of professors taught by him who are professor at various universities across the world. And one of the highly, highest respected uh, IITN in the world today. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mandal. You have to unmute yourself. Professor Mandal, you have to unmute. Sir, thanking you will be an acknowledgement of the, of the so many loaded words you mentioned about me, which I don't uh, really deserve. So I don't know whether to thank or uh, what to talk about, how to uh, pay it, uh, miss, uh, express my gratitude. Uh, it was thanks to you that we started this initiative. Without that machine, we had no, no idea as to what are there inside. So definitely that went a long way for us to dream big and then finally to come up with something that, uh, that now has been transferred to some, some companies. And uh, let me just share my slides first. So, uh, I'll uh, just begin my presentation. Um, a very warm welcome to this uh, episode of the presentation. This is the 88th uh, session, as, as I understand. And uh, at the beginning, just before saying thank you to anybody, I just pray rest in peace for Dr. K.K. Agarwal. Uh, he was a great, uh, great soul to walk on this planet. And we, we have, we are unlucky that he had to live this world prematurely. But then we are committed to 
carry forward the legacy that he has started. Thank you, the Heart Care Foundation of India for kindly inviting us and giving us this platform to disseminate some of the work that we have been doing. Our, our efforts are modest, it's not something big, but, uh, and uh, second of all, uh, the key to technique, technology means the key to contributors to this research initiative uh, are at a, at a uh, seriously uh, kind of a challenging situation. Professor Aditya Bandhupadda, who has been spearheading this research initiative, uh, is at present with a doctor with his one uh, less than one year old daughter, and her condition also is quite serious. So uh, he was supposed to give the presentation, but uh, yesterday evening only he said it, it may not be possible. Professor Saurabh Mitra, who is another professor from mechanical engineering, he also is key in the, in the development part. And uh, he is presently in the hospital with his mother. Uh, his mother is now terminal, terminally ill, and uh, obviously he he's not, cannot be expected to give the presentation. So I took the responsibility, even though I was kind of facilitating from background, because when I realized that Professor Aditya Bandhupadhyay and Professor Shorab Mitra are kind of uh, who's who in this domain, so I took a back seat and I even stopped learning more about it because I thought I'm in safe hands. The project is in safe hands, so let them let them do the development. Let me just facilitate. So I was doing the legwork and they were involved. I wish they were here to give the presentation. Would have been much better presentation, much more insightful. And then uh, next is, uh, uh, I understand that my August audience are from the medical, medical field. They're all practitioners. So talking about med medication or diagnostics or uh, any, any facilitation in medical domain will be like telling stories about maternal uncle to ma mother. So my apology to all of you to really look at it like uh, hearing something from the novice and then be, uh, miss, be uh, forgiving about all that. I may actually uh, say something unprofessionally or uh, not up to the mark. Also. So uh, my apology at the very beginning. And uh, my respect to all dignitaries, I don't have the names. So please excuse me for that. Now, uh, I will start with the technology that I'm not part of. That is the COVID app. It was developed by Professor Suman Chakraborty, happens to be one of the one of the illustrious faculty at IIT Kharagpur. He's a, he is a recipient of Vatnagar Award, and his team. I have the names later. So this is this has been named as COVID app. It's an isothermal nucleic acid based point of care test, meaning you don't need a laboratory. It can be done at any place. It is almost like a telephone booth and a small entrepreneur with little capital can start testing uh, for COVID and many other infest, infectious diseases because it is a nucleic, nucleic acid based test. It, it, it does not require a separation of RNA or anything. So it can be done very easily. Then, uh, we, we have built the knowledge base for indigenously manufacturing oxygen concentrator. I'm going to share our journey. Uh, it will be more about our journey and less about the technologies. Then we have developed something which conserve oxygen. Oxygen is precious that we have understood only during the COVID pandemic. Before that, perhaps we took it for granted that, that it is there in the air and it is just our job to separate, which can be done very easily. But COVID actually taught us that it's not so. It, it, it means any, any point of time, this life-saving drug, you may call it, call it the drug because for COVID, oxygen is the best drug. And absence of ox oxygen is life-threatening. So our unpreparedness was highly visible. And then uh, we somehow rose up to the occasion. And then uh, we have built it, but then uh, it is, it is somewhat late because COVID is, uh, is, if Omicron is not so serious, perhaps it is behind us, kind of. 
So we have developed this oxygen conserver that is that uh, saves oxygen. Like when an oxygen cylinder is connected to a patient for dispensing, we continuously give oxygen without break. So when the person is breathing in, oxygen is going in. When the person is exhaling out, oxygen is wasted. So we have developed a system that will prevent this wastage, meaning oxygen will be dispensed through a solenoid valve when it is necessary. When it is not necessary, it will close automatically, capturing information from the patient itself, not mechanically done from external sources so that there is no mistake. Then Dr. Gupta also donated us an Ambu bag. An Ambu bag. I never heard about it before that, and I never saw that. So when we received that, and when we learned as to how this is operated, and what are the, what are the, are the drudgery or uh, pain that is involved for operating that, we immediately realized that this can be mechanized for easy operation, constant operation for a long time under different contexts, whether it is inside an ambulance or in the field, some doctor or somebody, some health worker is attending a, a almost like a dying patient. Uh, this can be this can be mechanized in a manner that it can be operated for a long time without much drudgery. Now, a few lines about COVID app. I'm not part of the team. I just collected some data. Unluckily, my data got lost just before I went for taking a bath this morning. And then um, I requested Dr. Gupta to postpone the session. Today morning, I requested, but he said, there are August audience, they have been intimated and this will not be a good idea to postpone. So I again conjured up the whole information in a very, very shabby manner perhaps. So just bear with me kindly. Uh, I'll just give a bird's eye view about the thing and this technology has been transferred to an international company who are trying to market it globally and another company in India who are trying to market it in, in, the, in the country, within the country. Now, Professor Shuman Chakrabarti, Dr. Arindam Mandal, and Professor Aditya Bandhapadhyay, they have come up with this idea of a point of care solution. It's a very easy solution that can, that does not require huge infrastructure, number one, and the test requires only 45 minutes. Within 45 minutes, simultaneously using one single machine or say setup, uh, eight tests can be done in 45 minutes. Eight patients samples can be done, uh, can be tested in 45 minutes. That was the case maybe three to four months back when uh, we, we talked, we interacted with Professor Suman Chakravarti. It uses a stepwise isothermal nucleic acid test technology for rapid diagnosis. Like 45 minutes is a, is a, is a pessimistic estimate. The actual time is about 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Then it, it, is, it can be used not only for COVID, so that is, that is how it is uh, so relevant for uh, the entire medical fraternity, the population, because this is, this is a nucleic acid-based test. It, it, it can test almost, uh, almost all, I won't say all, uh, many, many uh, pathogens, viral, many, many viruses. So uh, this, is, this is kind of a universal uh, a solution for, for multiple diseases. Covirap provides us complete indigenous solution. So we don't have to now look for, for import for this kind of test and, and material. This, is, uh, this can, be, can be conducted directly from human swab samples in a portable de device. It can actually be carried. carried is a kind of an overestimate. You need a kind of a table where you should put all the samples and then uh, you have to uh, insert some strip, paper strip to collect the swab. And it is not a solid strip or a stick. It is just a paper. So even inserting becomes easy, meaning the patient or the, the target is will not feel any pain whatsoever. And it doesn't require extraction of RNA. We call this a magic box. The, the first part, first image is a box within which we have everything there. And we have this, uh, these many items that are necessary for conducting the test. 
And you can see that these tests are being conducted at a open air, you know, almost like a jungle kind of kind of atmosphere, where this is a rural setting. People are coming there. Just there is one table, and in, everything is done there. Now the sample is put uh, in a almost like an incubator. You need a battery for that. Uh, this 12 volt battery should be good enough for heating the sample for a while. In two batches, it is to be heated and then you put the strip inside the um, microtube and then the solution will start traveling upward. If there is a pos positivity in the solution, meaning if the virus is present in the, in the swab, then the co color of the strip will change upward very fast and you get to know that this is a positive case. And you don't have to rely on your eyes and uh, uh, there is no human error possibility that has been eliminated by through a, a smartphone app. So there is a box, you just insert, this is almost like a credit card inserting uh, uh, device. You just insert those, those samples and uh, the cell phone is on top of the box uh, at a, at a fixed place. You don't have to, means there is no scope for moving the cell phone here and there. Just press the button and the result will pop up. So human error is minimal. Time requirement is very, very low. And it's each test for a commercial entity will be costing something like 200 rupees, including profit. That's what the impression I have been given. 200 rupees, including profit. So that is the cost of one test. So if there is profit of 100 rupees, it should be something like 100 rupees uh, cost for the entrepreneur to conduct this test. Now, so a smartphone thing I have already mentioned, the foreign company whose name is Brahmaton Holding, they have, they have, they have signed the deal uh, some time back and uh, they have paid us substantial amount of money. In fact, that is the largest uh, technology transfer deal that we have done in IIT Kharagpur history perhaps. So uh, I, I, I'm not supposed to divulge the exact amount, but for Indian entrepreneurs, these are given not exactly free, but at a very nominal price because uh, there will be a lot of handholding, a lot of training involved at the beginning. So uh, IIT Kharagpur is charging only for that and not much as technology transfer fee. In, uh, in, in India, the company name is uh, Rapid Diagnostic. They have also initiated COVID uh, platform based testing, but they are doing it uh, for COVID as well as for tuberculosis. As regards the clinical trial, uh, this has been done by CMRI Kolkata, and uh, they have found that this is as good as RT-PCR uh, RT RT test. And at IIT Kharagpur, we have a hospital where we have done more than 1,000 tests, both RT-PCR as well as uh, COVIRAP test. And uh, performance is 100%, means wherever COVIRAP is giving 100%, the other also is, is giving a positive result. Uh, RTPCR also is giving a positive result. So uh, this is about the clinical trial part. So it's absolutely proven, te proven indigenous technology meant for the poor people in the country who can ill afford the RTPCR test. And this is, this is a very handy tool in the sense that you can place it in the airport in the railway station, anywhere, wherever there are agglomeration of people, you can just put it in the front, get everybody tested and they can board. Of course, uh, for, it, for, for the context of a railway station, it, it may become slightly costly. But then if somebody has the test done, he can, he can be given a certificate and can carry that for maybe 15 days or so. So if, from that perspective, perhaps it may not be so costly. No, I'm going to the oxygen. Sorry to, inter uh, sorry to interpret. Uh, Please, sir. Here. I just spoke to Professor Suman Chakravarti yesterday, and okay, he sir. shared with me that uh, one of our member of the roundtable, uh, Professor Anita Chakravarti, was of a great help to him. She guided him, uh, suggested him some points, and he also shared that the NIV as well as the ICMR Mumbai 
is finally concluding their remarks and that will be submitted to icmr delhi for a final approval and this is hopefully come within next 15 20 days time so is a wonderful initiative and indigenous technology developed by iit kharagpur and all salutes to iit kharagpur for helping us in a critical time thank you thank you sir thank you for that update i am in touch with professor suman even yesterday we had exchange mails but not through telephone uh, i am sorry that i did not gather that information i should have for actually i thought professor aditya bandopadha will be collecting all relevant information so i consumed up everything at the last moment but thank you for this key information this are very an encouraging information even for me for everybody our for all our audience this august forum so uh, and i believe that because it is just a, a simple test not really separation of rna so perhaps for omicron also it will be as good as for uh, delta or other variant so this is another team uh, professor aditya bandopadhyay is common in both teams and uh, he is he was the topper of his batch from mechanical engineering from iit kharagpur very few graduates from iit kharagpur come back to iit kharagpur to become a faculty member to teach their fellow students aditya bandopadhyay is one of them and he was a topper so he had a wonderful career he did not pursue that he came back to iit kharagpur he did his masters and phd all from iit kharagpur so he is spearheading this technical team at the beginning i started talking to uh, mr arjun malhotra who suddenly told us that that there should be indigenous technology and then mr malhotra and dr ashok gupta both actually gave us so much enthusiasm that we could not say no and i am kind of a very foolish uh, ag- foolishly aggressive about anything and everything if somebody tells me can you jump from the 10th story perhaps i may jump and say that yes i can do something like that so when they told us that can you build i said yes and then we started learning and dr gupta was very kind he used all his contacts and laid his hand on a on an existing machine and with his own money he sent it to us along with the ambu bag that is how we could open and and make make one not one but we are now testing three third machine uh, dr sourav mitra he is uh, btech from iit madras mtech from iit madras phd from some uh, university abroad then myself then we have sridhar singhal Sridhar Singhal is a BTech student, final year, fourth year, and he contributed. Uh, he is the key contributor to oxygen saver or oxygen conserver. So uh, we are re- we are really lucky to have him here. He's a BTech student, just two, three, three years after class twelve, but his knowledge is wonderful. He's a he's a very creative person. I take this opportunity to really appreciate sufficiently, which is never sufficient. Then we have. Uh, we have sorry ah uh, just a second we have lavish singhal another final year student from the bio biotechnology department i hope my slides are changing many of the times i find people complaining complaining that my slides are not changing so uh, he's he's a btech from biotechnology he helped us in the oxygen concentrator as well we try to involve many students we invited many students but because of the non proximity meaning, meaning that they were all at home and initially there was a huge team gradually there were drop outs but sridhar became a key contributor as well as um, his his colleagues now as i mentioned that uh, everything came at a time when uh, uh, we were absolutely unprepared so instead of Uh, appreciating or elaborating my technology i would like you to appreciate the fact that india is, is such means the whole issue the whole t- development that we have done is a reflection of the resilience of our nation we we did not have much to fight covid but now we have everything we are supplying uh, vaccines to, vaccines to the world perhaps uh, some day we might have even supplied to us we were supplying uh, some some medicines i forgot the name uh, when trump was there we supplied uh, some drugs so that shows our resilience our innovativeness etc etc so i'm not taking too much credit i'm just saying that all of our effort is part of that meaning at a time when we 
we did not have the knowledge. We did not have. We did not have any connectivity. We are at Kharagpur. There is uh, Kolkata is far away, and Kolkata, uh, from many respect, is far inferior compared to say Mumbai or other places where you get many many things ready, uh, ready handy. In Kolkata, we did not have any supplier of geolite. No, there were suppliers of compressor, but this, these were local local compressors. Okay, let me just cut it short because uh, I should not elaborate too much. I have another speaker. So uh, I, let me just quickly wrap up uh, the things that we have done. There was no geolite supplies. We had to really work hard from US people tried, from France, somebody tried. Uh, Dr. Gupta himself connected us with many, many people. Hello. And mm. there were very few actually could uh, help us in in laying our hands on right kind of geolite. Without that, he, he concentrator, medical grade oxygen concentrator cannot be manufactured. Yeah, it was it was a it was a uh, journey with a lot of uh, tons and twists. But then we had helping hands from various places. It was like when we look back in retrospect, we feel that it was like almost like Ma Durga starting a journey for, for the devil, means to kill the devil, Ashura. So Dr. Gupta gave us that, that uh, oxygen concentrator to give us a first experience about the inside of a oxygen concentrator and the Ambu bag. Then there, was, there is a company called Gardner Denver. There, the, this is a German company, but then they offered us two compressor free of cost. That came slightly late. That is why our whole journey became uh, kind of uh, it, it, it was delayed because this compressors were the right compressor that we did not. He took a lot of time to identify. We were working on compressor from Kolkata. These were Chinese made, Chinese made, and good for nothing. Then there was a company called B5. Uh, I'll not talk much about them. We had uh, a little bit of a strained relation, but at the beginning, I must thank them. They gave us the first sample of right kind of geolite. So I take this opportunity to thank them. Uh, later, of course, our relation got strained after, after we were almost ready to sign an MOU when, uh, okay, this part is a negative part, so I'll not criticize them at this point of time, say August Forum. I don't want to, this is not a criticism. So I just, uh, please just know that MIFI helped us uh, giving free samples of July that was critical to gain initial, uh, initial, um, uh, Credential or or say uh, success, and then some private fund, and eventually IIT Foundation in US they gave us uh, twenty thousand dollar or fifteen lakh rupees, something like fifteen lakh rupees, and a supplier from Kolkata. You are supplying uh, local goods, but then he was he did out of the way. He drove all the way from Kolkata everywhere. It was lockdown at this point of time, even IIT was under lockdown, we was given special permission. And then he came all the way with his own car and supplied whatever we needed. So thanks to him as well. These are technical, I'll just bypass this slide. Uh, the novelty that uh, that has gone in, that have gone in, the, in, the, in this technology, that is, we have tried to acclimatize the technology to the local condition, like our weather is, is uh, highly humid. And if you use a Phillips machine or any other machine for that matter, in India, you'll find that the, the efficacy goes down, the concentration of oxygen goes down because there's so much of humidity and they do not have much to tackle the humid condition of the air. So eventually the concentration goes down. We have tackled that. And the com complete electronics, which is kind of new, but we find now that many people in India, even IIT Kanpur has also come up with a, with a mach machine. Uh, so uh, they are also claiming to be a ten uh, power, power minute machine, and uh, they they also claim that there is some dryer in their machine. So the inside is not known to us, but we are giving our technology absolutely free. Um, Mr. Uh, Shubendu Mondul, the founder of Design Force, we have given the technology to him free, and he is also now collaborating with us, co-developing. Uh, refining the technology in collaboration with us. Then there is another company. I'll just come to come to that moving forward. So we have whosoever are coming forward 
we are giving this all this technology absolutely free except COVID app. Uh, so the three technologies that I'm, I'm speaking, we are giving it absolutely free, not just free. We are hand holding. If anybody wants to come here, we'll show them how this works. And if, um, and if they need meetings or online meetings, we are conducting meetings with Shubendu. We had several rounds of meeting. Then uh, we have some innovation on the cooling system because from compressor, air comes out very hot. It is to be cooled uh, uh, with uh, energy efficient method. Then our design is modular, meaning that from five liter to 10 liter to 20 liter, these are all just you build another set of canister and then you have, uh, you can increase the capacity. You can multiply the capacity more or less. And early estimates suggest that it should be within 40,000 rupees, which may look slightly higher compared to the Phyllis machine. If you add profit, logistics and other things with that, but then this machine is far superior compared to whatever available in the marketplace. Marketplace, you get only imported machines. They're not made for, they're made for cold countries where humidity is low, but in India, humidity is very high. So our machine is a solution. Uh, we are not charging any royalty. I have already mentioned that. And we are inviting through this forum, any entrepreneurs uh, who will be interested to take the technology and carry forward and com commercially manufacture any of the technologies that we are talking about are most welcome. I'll bypass this slide. The oxygen saver, we call it oxygen conserver. It conserves oxygen. As I mentioned, that whenever somebody is excelling oxygen, the oxygen cylinder should be shut off. Then you save 50% of the oxygen. In fact, it is more than 50%. At the least, it is 50%. So our system captures the, uh, the lung movement. Whenever a person is trying to breathe in, it will capture that information. And then uh, it will, uh, when it is, he's trying to breathe in, it will uh, open, the, open the valve, oxygen will come. When he will excel, oxygen will be shut off and you save oxygen. The whole circuit has been done. Uh, this is a pressure sensor that has gone in to build this. And uh, uh, this is a video, I'm not showing the video for the, for the interest of time. I'll show another video. Oh, the video has started. Let me stop that. Uh, I'll show another video. Just uh, take a break and show the video from uh, my um, stuff sharing. I'll share a, a tab to show. Can I share the tab now here? Yeah. So this I have, I have received just now, right before the, right before the presentation, I received it from. This is our oxygen saver. It is actually under under clinical trial at IIT Guwahati. I did not even check what is there inside, so I'll I'll just cut it short. So uh, our uh, collaborator is sitting in IIT Guwahati, who is who shared the video right right now, and it has been tested in IIT Kharagpur Hospital, and it is working pretty good. So uh, let me move fast first. This company name is Revolut Health Tech Private Limited. Uh, there are some some. Uh, introduction about the company, which I'm bypassing. Then this mechanized bag, valve, mask, or uh, ambu bag. Uh, the background has been already uh, discussed. And what we have done actually is we have made a lever driven system where, wherein the, this ambu bag will be placed in between two levers. The top lever, the user press the top lever and it deflates. You lift the lever, it inflates. And uh, because of the lever action, you get mechanical advantage and using that and uh, this is this has been connected with a motor and it runs pretty well uh, but then we are trying to use artificial intelligence to capture the breathing cycle of the person if any if the person is breath, trying to breathe in fact the the technology that we have brought here in this this system will be integrated uh, to capture the breathing cycle and then integrate that with this so that we capture the breathing cycle of the person and then the motor will be driven 
uh, accordingly, meaning whenever the person is trying to breathe in, the motor will press, deflate the bag, and then when the it will capture the cycle as to how fast, how slow the person is breathing, and it will be done absolutely. This can be operated using a leg. Suppose somebody is sitting in an ambulance, so he is sitting on the bench. He can use the leg to operate. In the field also, it can be just hanged on a on a any kind of a of a of a of an arrangement. You can tie it in a, in, with, a, with a with a tree plant or anything, and operate either by hand or by leg. Uh, multi one can operate back simultaneously. I thought I don't have the video, but then that is that is the reason because I actually conjured up everything just the last moment. Now there are uh, many other things that we are working on. I'll I'll this this is too much time, so I'll pass it on to Mr. Subendu Mondal to carry it forward from here. Actually, we are working on uh, several other technologies which are at early stage. So maybe I'll take another opportunity to talk about them uh, some other time rather than uh, you know uh, making it boring because uh, now I'm myself talking, looking like monologue. So uh, I will end here. I'll take questions maybe after Suvendu is, uh, is done. And thank you for kindly, patiently hearing uh, my monologue, whatsoever that is. Thank you, Professor Mandal. It has been wonderful presentation and so much of eye opener for we as a doctors, how much technology can help us uh, uh, driving the oxygen in the right place at the right time. Thank you very much. And we invite the, uh, Mr. Mandal to share his update on the use of oxygen concentrator in this develop technology. Thank you. Uh, thank you and good morning to the August audience. And uh, we're really privileged to be here uh, with all of you. Just a background that, uh, uh, well, I myself came from the IIT background and we have a small team, majority are from the IIT only. And um, we started from, uh, we started in 2019 in a different domain altogether. That was partly in the luxury domain. But uh, during the COVID uh, time, we pivoted our business model and came to the medical devices and uh, communication devices. So uh, we started, you know, during this wave two, we started working on the oxygen concentrator. We made it, but then um, that oxygen shortage, uh, that time was very small. It was around say one and a half month kind of thing. So there was not such immediate requirement and as small startup, we did not have a um, way to uh, go for a mass production kind of thing. So at that time, we were also exploring that, yeah, uh, what is the problem with the uh, so many uh, imported uh, products from China and, and even the good products like Philips. So we also did some sort of uh, uh, re-engineering of those products. Uh, we tested those products at different places at different uh, humid conditions, like uh, during the summer, during the monsoon. Say so during uh, uh, at at Delhi, we have tested. We have also tested at a say uh, comparatively uh, at a place where that humidity is comparatively much higher. Say in Kolkata, and 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 we have seen that there is significant difference in the test results. So that was the turning point, and uh, at that time we discussed with Professor Mandal and his team, like uh, Aditya and Saurabh and uh, other. Mm -hmm. So, and then what we felt that um, what happened that while doing the whole testing, um, uh, we are using a chemical called geolite, and that geolite is actually um, uh, getting moistured because of this uh, you know, different climatic conditions or, or may, may, maybe that uh, the purity is actually uh, uh, becoming down over time. So these are the kind of the things and then we, uh, we thought that uh, we should make a business model where we should work only for the uh, better quality for the hospital grade kind of thing instead of um, doing it for the personal purpose. Because personally, whosoever using the oxygen concentrator, the main purpose is basically for the chronic diseases, not for the acute kind of uh, requirement. So for acute kind of requirement, people do go to the hospital. And, and that was, that's why we made some uh, other automation, like the, the um, uh, way to automate this uh, uh, humid conditions or, or the similar sort of thing. And, and, and um, 
finally, we came with uh, a model which is completely automating this uh, climatic uh, related factors. And further, it um, gives that to the uh, chemical chambers and that uh, output is coming. So that now it can be suitable for uh, Delhi, it can be suitable for Kolkata or Mumbai or Chennai or any other places. Of course, there could have some sort of limitation, but uh, this could uh, still be much better than any other existing model which is available in India. So that's what our brief uh, background. I hope that I, I covered them. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir, uh, Subindu. Uh, uh, I request uh, Dr. Kalna to extend the time for discussion, and I will invite some of the questions from uh, our uh, eminent uh, experts, particularly with the use of oxygen conserver, which Professor Mandal has developed indigenously and is a wonderful idea. I do appreciate, and I do appreciate that this can be a uh, such a useful thing. We have been wasting oxygen. All of us have been working in ICU and various things, and we know how much oxygen is being wasted. So this is a very good idea of oxygen conserver. And using of AI technology and using of the technological support, we can really uh, uh, save the oxygen for the right time and right purpose. Any comments, uh, Professor Jamkar? I would invite uh, others to put their comments. Dr. Lokwani. Uh, so, I have one question from Dr. Mandel. Uh, he said uh, he, they have developed uh, some rapid testing with the mobile app. Right. Wo, that I just wanted to, in fact, uh, understand, is it different from the rapid diagnostics uh, kits which are already in the market? And one from what you mentioned, rapid diagnostic one, even they are marketing one kit and such kits are already available. Is it having some kind of a superiority or uh, some additional advantage over the existing rapid test? Sir, uh, this actually Professor Shuman Chakravarti would have been the best person to answer. I guess, uh, uh, in fact, today morning I was uh, searching in the Google Scholar as to you know, who all are working on nucleic acid-based test. And I found there are many papers, meaning researchers across the world have been doing research on the same technology. So everybody has some kind of a proprietary uh, process like the temperature at which you have to uh, heat, et cetera, et cetera. There's two stage process. So uh, every process is a proprietary process. I guess, this is my guess, that uh, majority of the people are uh, using the same process Maybe they are chemically slightly different. Otherwise, uh, uh, a comparative study between our technology and uh, technology which are already available in marketplace uh, is to be done by somebody. I'm not very sure whether this has been done. Uh, even the available technologies are new. Our technologies are also new. It, uh, it came almost simultaneously. Some people could commercialize uh, before others. So that is how it is already there in the market. The companies to whom we have marketed uh, they were uh, kind of slow in uh, in bringing reaching out to the to the population with the latest technology but then uh, that was not in our hand because uh, some company some company should manufacture those chemicals uh, otherwise the additional yes. one thing which was uh, attraction was a association of that particular testing process with the mobile app that has not yet so mobile, mobile, the job of mobile app is to do a do an image processing because there is a, a paper strip and change, color changes in the strip. So there may be some human error while reading the change in color. So that is why there is uh, this mobile app where uh, accurately, absolutely accurately, this color change can be captured. So that is the function of the mobile. Mobile has no other function. Means. Uh, there's nothing diagnostic about the mobile. Mobile actually do an image processing. Uh, and, they, and, documentation. They and documentation part also. This is a documentary the, proof. Yeah. Right, right. Documentation and messaging to the patient simultaneously that your test has been done, it is positive or negative with the report. Can I come in? I've been interested yes. with Professor Soban Chakravarti almost for the last six months or eight months when we started this project with... Uh, uh, wheels 
and he did share that he is using ai technology he shared that this is a very unique technology which is good for mass screening particularly it can be taken door to door it can be done in a mass group uh, gathering and rather than waiting for the result to come after a uh, certain hour this is within 45 minutes so this is extremely useful technology i do not know the difference between other rapid testing but this is the one which is based on a nucleic acid and which is his unique uh, characteristic and i think if this is approved by the niv and um, icmr this will be a game changer in most of the states across the country particularly for whenever there is a mass gathering and we fear about the the airport screening and all this the cost could be cut, brought down to less than 100 or 200 rupees so i think this is a is a wonderful uh, indigenous technology developed by professor soman chakravarti and i would request dr kalda to uh, talk to soman chakravarti and invite him for one of the session to enlighten us and we should suggest uh, our in our uh, round table expert recommendation also to uh, to the competent authority to include this as a national screening program thank you thank you i, I think uh, this will be very good what dr gupta said because this will be directly done even a self monitoring by the patient is possible yeah. Yes. Sir, it is like pregnancy so test. It exactly like the hospitals. Yes, yes. It has come down to like a pregnancy test. Like, like a pregnancy test. Right, sir. And it is uh, not just COVID virus. It is for any kind of virus. So in future, if there is a pandemic, we are just ready for testing. Yeah. I think my uh, question to Professor Mandal is that we have been talking about the. Uh, Uh, the different levels of oxygen concentrator ranging from 5 liters to 10 liter and 40 liter we said we just have to add some uh, canisters to increase the capacity but can that sustain the uh, long use for lasting for 4 hours or 6 hours or they, we need to build up some uh, extra compartment to sustain the use of oxygen concentrator for a long duration particularly in icu as sir, a backup in icu so if uh... in the context of an icu it is always recommended that there should be a sars tank big tank because any machine can go off go out go kaput so there should be sufficient sufficiently large tank to supply the oxygen for at least a, a few minutes so that if there is any technical hitch uh, the oxygen is not uh, because this is machine so tank should be there but otherwise if you because this is a modular design there is no no issue about uh, about this uh, see the, the compressed air is coming out from a compressor and that is cooled and it is going through different canisters you just add number of canisters the control system will be the same common only the canister will be different and outlet will go to a tank if you are thinking in terms of a 40 liter tank then it is always better that there has to be a, there should be a, a big tank for conserving the oxygen or making a reservoir where oxygen will remain so on demand suppose there are only two patients then running a 40 liter machine will be useless so you can uh, in the meantime you can just uh, fill the tank while two other patients will consume that and then if there is a power cut or anything you can use the tank for for the interim period thank you is professor jamkar around i would invite him to comment on the use of ai in uh, use of oxygen conserver i don't see him here uh, i have uh, if you permit me sir i have a few comments to make uh, this both the this oxygen concentrator as well as saver machine and uh, they should actually should have some standards they define some standards so that uh, we can forward these standards to bis with the idea to get standardization of the oxygen concentrators so that in our indigenous setup we can say ki our this concentrator this concentrator from so and so company is meeting these standards and nowadays the bis is very very proactive and uh, if we they talk to them probably they will come out with if there are no existing standards for oxygen concentrator uh, they can come out with uh, these standards for these machines so that is highly appreciated because uh, many people are claiming that we have solution about oxygen concentrator this that and these are life saving 
meaning like threatening as well. So for the wrong machine may threaten life, the right machine will save life. So if there is a there is a VIS standard, nothing like that. Even we will be guided by that. Our refinement will be around that standard. We can we can have have some standard to follow. At present, there is nothing to follow. We have foreign machines to follow, but then the foreign machines are not really up to the mark. So we have nothing to follow. So any standard would be wonderful. There's no doubt about that. And we can help BIS to come up with the standard as to what are the parameters. They don't have to yeah. understand. Technology. They need to understand the parameters that these parameters determine uh, whether this is adequate, inadequate, whether this is bad, good, or whatever. So we can we can partner with them. In fact, I am I am a I am a team member in a micro irrigation BIS standard setup. We had the first meeting some time back. So uh, we are brainstorming as to how to set up standard for micro irrigation. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. I just want to add one point. Sorry. Uh, that during the time of process of development, we realized Professor Mandal said, okay, we are not sure about the purity of oxygen output. And then he was the one who suggested that we should have a purity meter, which was a unique idea and which he struggled to find a purity meter across the country and we could not find anything. So can you enlighten us on a purity meter, role of purity Sir, meter? Sir, a purity meter cost about 2,500 rupees and we did not find anywhere in the world then finally, somebody from Chennai approached us that we have, because we were we were sensitizing everybody. So we received a mail from him that I have a purity meter. Then uh, he sold it for 16,000 rupees. 2,500 to 16,000. That is how we could verify our claim that our machine actually is functioning to desired level. So that, can that be an important point to add purity meter in every oxygen concentrator, which is being manufactured right, across? Right, sir. So we are also doing research as to how to convert existing oxygen sensor to a full-fledged oxygen meter. Purity. Presently, the sensors are available, but then you need a lot of programming, a lot of electronics is involved to uh, calibrate that and then display whatever is the purity that is coming so our idea is to put that in every machine the at the outlet that this is the purity that you are getting i think this is a very very vital point because most yes. of the concentrator uh, although they claim as a 90% purity but when they the outflow is increased the purity comes down to 30% and which is not really life saving so i think this is a very very vital point which professor kalra should mention in our recommendation that the purity meter of 90% and above should be recommended for use of oxygen concentrator. Right, that can become a BIS, part of a BIS standard as well. Yeah, right. that will be part of the standard. Even if, the, if, if an oxygen concentrator yeah. has to come to the market, it must have this. Uh, okay. Sir, I, I would like to highlight one more point that when you are talking when we are talking about the uh, standard of the concentrator, we should also talk about the um, standard of the those components like this meter or maybe the flow meter and those kind of things. So there are uh, these kind of components are also available in market. Say for example, you are actually producing four LPM, so four liter per minute, but that your meter is showing five liter per minute. So such kind of uh, components are available in the market and there is no standard for those components. So Very right. for the component, we should also work on those components. Right. The claims should be, means there should be an authority to justify the claims made. If somebody is saying liter per minute, is it 10 liter or 9 liter or 11 liter? Some, some check should be there. One more point, uh, Professor Mandal and Professor Kalra, which we're discussing about the electric uh, safety fire safety issue in the because this is a uh, the motor yeah. which is running for a long time so yeah. are the criteria and the suggestions for fire safety for use of these and because this also releases oxygen and there could be some oxygen leak in the atmosphere so yes. any recommendations on that fire safety in the uh, yes, yes sir. the model which we worked with the iit kharagpur we already made the c certification for this which is basically related with the um, this uh, electric uh, related faults Later on, we will also do the ROH certification, which is basically for uh, some sort of faulty items and other thing. And later, uh, once uh, we are into the production and if we get some sort of funding and other things, we will also do the EVEL certification, which is the highest standard related with these uh, particular things. I think these are the recommendations which Professor yeah. Karda can make to our uh, team and committee. Yeah. Yes. 
every concentrator machine should have a set of instructions how to use safely in a set of, in a condition whether home or in hospital yes. yeah uh, that yes. should apply to all the machines which are imported from other or donated also yes very yes. very vital thing that is very important in fact that is most important in fact Be because unless yes. that thing we cannot compete with those thing because those are actually very cheap products and those are getting sold more than the uh, you know authentic products thank you because the claims are, are tall claims yes 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 professor kalra any more questions and recommendation otherwise we can request professor mandal to make a brief uh, recommendations for the requirement of the oxygen concentrator oxygen sensor and oxygen conserver and then based on that we can uh, use our platform to recommend uh, forward those recommendations to competent authority any more comment from uh, any of the panelists i just want to share that uh, professor chakravarti has also developed a ai uh, system for early detection of uh, changes in the ct for covid and uh, i would invite him some day to share that technology also with us right so that will be nice he is get getting from the horse's mouth directly will be wonderful yes great great and uh, if there are no more questions i hand over to professor kalra professor lakwani has raised her hand yes yes yeah, dr professor lakwani the yes, dr lakwani are you please unmute I'm, oh yes uh, i was just requesting because we require these machines in the terminal conditions when the patient is really in the need of it a uh, couple of things must be made very essential and they should have the very stringent quality control like yeah. what you said quality of the uh, oxygen quantity of the oxygen mm -hmm. the two things should be monitored very very strictly whatever innovation and whatever product we are offering these two things should be offered very strictly because a physician depends on them and mm -hmm. we are whole thing depends on them so that should be the i mean one of the essential things which we should recommend yeah right very right taken with full respect yeah i think i would like to uh, once again uh, want to thank the wheels foundation uh, which is a uh, alumina association of pan iit and till last year i was not aware that how much contribution is coming from the technology side iit has been a you know uh, main task force for develop all this technology and thanks to the arjun malhotra for introducing me to professor mandal and i am very fortunate that i am member of the xpd health council of the wheels foundation and we are doing so much of good project also with the uh, iit kharagpur and the iit delhi and uh, so many other centers and as a doctor i always say we must learn from the iit alumina how much they are contributing to their uh, to institution and their to nation and we as a doctor have failed alumina association of all medical association have failed to come forward and help the nation at a critical time all of us are busy criticizing others and we are hardly doing a major contribution as alumina association and we must take a lead from iit alumina association and again once again want to thank the wheels arjun malhotra and professor mandal for uh, updating us as a doctor thank you very much professor mandal thank you and thank you Thank you, Hello sir, so much. Thank, Thank you. you for giving us this platform to talk to this August audience and get feedback and and to sensitize them about our activities. And I look forward to collaboration, suggestion, and uh, joint uh, whatever taking up challenges, whatever comes on our way. We are always there, and uh, I I would uh, I would hope to be of use at any point of time. Thank you. thank you thank you yes professor kalra now yeah thank you dr mandal and uh, mr subendu for your wonderful presentation on thank the you, work sir. you are doing excellent work you are doing in the iit kharagpur and it will be great help to the our society and thank you dr ashok gupta for uh, contacting giving us this contact of iit kharagpur team and thank you all the participants see you again next week some new topic thank you Thank you thank, thank you. you. thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you.